Well, hi, good morning. Thank you for joining me in my shop. Today's the last day of 2024. Oh my gosh, the quarter century is done. <laughs> Hard to believe. I mean, when I was a kid, I couldn't even believe. I didn't even think about the year 2000 or anything past it. It just seemed, just seemed on another planet. <laughs> and here we are, we're on another planet now. Not the same planet I was on when I was a kid. Okay, what about this radio? So, tested the tubes. I found one that's weak, but probably can't explain why the radio is so weak uh, at the speaker, why the output is so weak. So we're gonna look into this a little bit further and see if we can nail down what might be the, uh, the root cause of the radio being weak. Now it could be there's three or four things going on and in combination the radio has become weak that's quite likely uh, so there may not be one particular thing uh, we, we still have these uh, bias batteries both of them seem to be producing voltage uh, around a volt a little over a volt which seems okay so I'm not inclined to pursue those guys uh, at this point in time um, maybe what we can do is listen for the signal right at the point where it's been converted to audio and see what's there that's right on the volume control normally one terminal of the volume control um, so just just looking at this radio now I see something odd again let's take a look with the uh, closer up camera here this wire right here now, hopefully my camera will focus focus camera Ah. there we go okay see the dots what is that so this is the third place now I, oh coming up out of here well it could be you know that is this this capacitor here but it doesn't look doesn't not look like it ran down the wire. That's very odd. It's reminiscent of the other stuff I found. Uh, which, which I'm yeah, was it this thing? Yeah, this thing covered with black stuff. Hmm. Black stuff here and there in this radio. N no idea what it means. Uh, sometimes you know you make observations and you just have to put it on the shelf for a while. And later you can take it off the shelf look at it closer or somewhere along the line something else goes on the shelf and it all makes sense suddenly so that's why I tend to make what might appear to be just kind of waste of time observations well um, what we'll do is we'll take the signal tracer and we'll listen to the signal it's going into the volume control we'll see how loud it is now this is a qualitative test it's not uh, quantitative so a bit a bit of guesswork as to uh, whether that's going to be a strong signal or a weak signal that we're going to hear and I do think I have to should I what signal are we going to hear I'm going to need to hook up an antenna here for sure which means I'm going to have to run and turn it on because it's not switched on down here okay Let's switch on the radio it's a little surprising there's no light in this radio no uh, pilot light so <coughs> Definitely on. <laughs> Again, I haven't switched on the antenna yet. Hundred volts supplied to it, so it should be operating. Let me go turn on the antenna. We'll get it going that way. Okay, I'm just 
just going to stop for a sec too. Okay, antenna switched on, so a fairly good signal on the antenna wires here. There we are. Full volume. Still distorted, eh? Oh, that's louder than I remember. Oh, it's not so not so quiet. Interesting. Uh, that's not bad, actually. Distorted. Higher volume. It could be bias batteries not doing the job. Or the uh, biasing. This radio, the uh, output tube grid is biased with a power supply trick. It's not really a trick, but it's just a method. We should check the bias voltage on the output tube grid. Okay, the output tube was a, uh, was it a 6K, same as a 6K6, was it? I gotta, I gotta stop here and just sort a couple things out. That uh, thundering sound you hear? That's my two little cats playing in the room right above me. And that's the sounds of their feet and their heads banging, <laughs> hanging around. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got my voltmeter out and ready. Let's put it on DC here. And we're going to look at the bias voltage on this radio. So I have the meter meter grounded to the chassis here. And pin 5 is the pin we're after on the output tube. Pin 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's right here. meter didn't move a bit. Let's make it more sensitive. Bring this back here. So we have the meter on negative, a negative setting, and I'm getting, watch, what happens here? It's going, it's going the other way. Let's make it more sensitive. We'll put it on positive. So we're reading positive, this is on the 1.5 scale, so it's 0.4 volts positive to the chassis. should really read it uh, between chassis and cathode to really get a, a proper idea here. The positive voltage doesn't sound good to me. It sounds quite wrong, actually. So let's take a look at the... So I'm, I'm using, going to use one of these meters because there's no ground involved at all. So I can read between cathode and cathode is probably probably pin number eight. I've got this here. I've got this here. Pin number eight on the cathode. So eight on the cathode. Now if I want this to show. Um, let me put the negative lead on the cathode, positive lead on the voltmeter. We'll be reading the volt on the voltmeter, on the grid. Go this way, like this. Cathode first. like I got short suddenly. I, I did. I'm down on my knees here doing this. Okay, pin 8. Very hard to get to here. Pin 8. Okay, that's pin 8.
So what I'm reading there is a positive voltage on the grid of half a volt. Relative to the cathode, it really should be like minus 10 volts or something like that. So the classic way that this problem develops where you have a positive grid is from a failed or a leaky uh, grid blocking capacitor. So we should be able to spot that by just tracing off the grid connection here. And uh, this guy right here. So on one side of this, we should find uh, a, a high uh, DC voltage, positive voltage, something like 60 volts or so. Let's take a look. So that's on the 150 volt scale. So the meter is showing 70 volts there. And on the other side, Point five volt scale. Huh. See, this should be a negative voltage here, not positive. That guy right there. Okay. We're going to get rid of that. Hopefully, it improves the bias of the tube and maybe eliminate the uh, the uh, distortion that we're hearing. Point zero zero five. You can see the wax is all over the place on it. Looks dry. It's bad looking. Let's see what we can see on the uh, test. So I like to test capacitors that I remove from these radios. Uh, almost always they test in a very similar way. It's bad and leaky. Not always, but I'd certainly bet this one's gonna gonna come out very bad. We have a couple reasons for believing that. Looking at it, it looks terrible. And the test we did <coughs> suggests this guy is leaking positive pressure from the plate side over to the grid side of this. So 20, this is a 50 volt setting, although it says 25 if you can read it. Whoops, you probably cannot. Yes, you can. Even though it says 25, it's actually 50 volts on the first test. Here we go, 50 volts. Oh, she's not going to open. Okay, so as capacitors go, this is this is bad. This is a bad one. Um, definitely. So 0 0.005, I'll put another one in. And then we will see what happens to the sound? Uh, will it get louder? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure of that. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, got the capacitor in. Very good. We will start up the radio and see what, see what transpires. Maybe saying transforms is a better word for a radio. We will see what transforms here. Oh, what was that? What was that? <laughs> Tons of volume. Distortion gone. Beautiful. Une seule tondeuse, 
So this is 865 we're listening to and it's almost exactly right. That's Hamilton at 820. Not bad. Very good. It's a station I listen to, 740. Does that sound a little distorted? John Lennon just like starting over and the queen of terror in the at speaker. the time was Madonna number 14 number 14 located just north of front street lovely okay well that was the major the major problem there with this radio for sure it's the uh, output tube bias now like I said before, that this radio, did I say it before? This radio doesn't get its bias from, yeah, I did mention it, from a, a, a cathode resistor, which is most common. This one's done in a different fashion. Um, okay, that's great. And so I was kind of signing off on the video there. Then I realized I didn't do the uh, measurements again to see what the result was. So I turned the radio back on, and I've just started the video now. You notice the radio's got no volume? What happened? I just turned it off, turned it back on. Volume control. I think it's nothing. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, bias voltage on the output tube. So we're going to measure it to the chassis. And we're going to expect a negative voltage of some amount. This is on the 15 volt scale now, and you can see it if I do this. There we go. 15 volts, and number five was this guy right here. So now we're getting a negative voltage of 10 volts, or before we had a slightly positive voltage under this test. So there we are. So proper biasing was restored. Okay, now I can say farewell. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, not farewell. And uh, I'll see, see you next year. I'll see you next year. Tune in again next year. See ya.